When we came into this market, we wanted to come into it with a technology that was going to be very environmentally friendly. Uh, it was going to be very low cost. It didn't require a lot of volume on the production line to drive down cost. Recently, there have been two U.S. companies, namely Salgen X and ESS, that have developed new battery products with salt water as the key ingredients. In fact, water is the cheapest material on Earth available everywhere and accounts for more than 70% of the Earth's surface. This contrasts with the scarcity and instability of raw materials for the production of lithium batteries, which is in a state of alarm worldwide due to the shortage of supply to serve our huge demand today. As you know, the global battery market size of the new battery was registered at a CAGR of 24.14% during the forecast period of 2022 to 2030, which is nearly 1.5 times higher than lithium-ion batteries, which were projected to expand at more than 16.5%. This demonstrates how quickly these new batteries are evolving and they will soon replace lithium ion batteries as the industry leader in energy storage entirely. So how does this new battery outperform others and when will it replace traditional lithium batteries? Stay tuned to find out in today's episode of Tesla Car World. Hey there, before we begin, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and ring the bell so you'll never miss out on future updates from our channel. Now, let's get started with today's episode. To start off, let's talk about what exactly are salt water batteries. A salt water battery is a type of battery that uses a mixture of water and salt as its electrolyte. Salt water batteries are not flammable, safe, have long lifespans, and are not prone to pollution. They are considered to be an eco-friendly energy storage solution, possibly more so than lithium ion. The main difference between salt water batteries and other batteries in energy storage is their chemistry. In salt water batteries, a liquid solution of salt water is used to capture, store, and eventually discharge energy, whereas a traditional lithium ion battery uses the element lithium as its primary ingredients for conducting electricity. So how does it actually work? There are three principles that this battery follows. They include taking the form of two tanks, a catholite and an analyte. These tanks surround a chamber that splits down the middle and the liquid electrolytes flow from the tanks into either side through the process of reduction. Next is redoxing, where the electrons from the catholite transfer to the analyte as the battery is being charged. And last, its tanks contain chlorine gas dissolved into a proprietary electrolyte, while the other tank is full of nothing but sodium chloride and water. What's more, salt water batteries have the same structure as sodium batteries because they are all made of salt water and moving sodium ions that generate electricity for the battery. So then how are salt water batteries more affordable than other batteries? US-based company Salgen X has proposed its salt water flow battery with a component of salt, water, and vanadium electrolyte. Salgen X claims that its salt water flow battery is less than 100 US dollars per kilowatt hour. The main reason is that besides taking advantage of the ubiquity of salt water means saving a lot of money, the cost of its batteries, electrolytes, is less than 5 US dollars per kilowatt hour. Another American company, ESS, is also experimenting with salt water flow batteries. Like the Salgen X battery, it operates with a salt water electrolyte, but it's using iron salts in water instead. Where vanadium electrolytes in Salgen X's battery can represent as much as 80% of a flow battery's cost, iron electrolytes of the ESS battery makes up for only about 4%. Salt water batteries are a relatively new type of battery that has been gaining popularity in recent years. They are often touted as a cheaper and more sustainable alternative to traditional batteries. However, when it comes to comparing their price with other batteries, the picture is a bit more complicated. First, it is important to note that there are many different types of batteries on the market and their prices can vary widely depending on their intended use, size, and technology. For example, the Salgen X company claims that there are 257 US dollars per kilowatt hour for system infrastructure at a total cost of $500,000 or $166 per kilowatt hour for the 3000 kilowatt hour battery. 
On the other hand, the other reason for this is that they use more common and cheaper materials such as salt water. Additionally, they are easier to manufacture and do not require the same complex chemistry as other types of batteries. The manufacturer said the new battery has an energy density of 125.7 watt hours per liter. It requires two large tanks filled with fluid electrolytes, one of which is salt water and the other is a proprietary electrolyte. The solution can be scaled by adding more electrodes and additional electrolyte tanks. Sal Gen X had a plan to offer the solution in 250 kilowatts, 3 megawatt hours, 6 megawatt hours, 12 megawatt hours, and 18 megawatt hour configurations. The flow battery is membrane free, unlike most redox flow batteries. The absence of the membrane saves huge upfront purchase costs, maintenance, and consumable expenses, Salgenex says on its website. And what of the life cycles of salt water batteries? Salt water batteries have long life cycles, up to 25 years, compared with lithium EV batteries, which have a 15 to 20 year shelf life. Meanwhile, other batteries like lead acid batteries can have a design life in the ballpark of around five years, depending on the manufacturing process of the battery. From this, we can safely say that salt water batteries have five times the longevity of lead acid batteries in the competitive battery industry. Additionally, the salt water batteries have a simple design since they are extremely durable and long lasting. A regular salt water battery lasts for nearly 5,000 cycles, five times higher than lithium ion batteries which only last around a thousand cycles. What's even more fun is that the lead acid battery has a life cycle lasting 500 cycles, demonstrating that its lifespan is 10 times less than that of salt water batteries. But since the salt water battery is not prone to explosions, you can use it beyond the indicated cycles safely. That means you will likely not have to replace a saltwater battery as often as you would with most lithium ion batteries, which can save you money in the long run. Based on its simple design, saltwater batteries offer direct control over their energy and storage capacities as long as it has enough electrolytes. It can theoretically increase the storage as much as you want by increasing the size of the tanks. And if the number of the electrode cell stacks are increased, that means more power. ESS announced that the maximum storage duration mark of their iron flow batteries is 12 hours, which remains greater than lithium ion batteries at 30 minutes to 3 hours. So what are the financial benefits of salt water batteries? First of all, salt water batteries have a huge advantage from material cost. Salt and water are widely available and are at a low cost. For instance, the price of material salt is around $80 per ton, which is less than 462 times that of the $37,000 per ton price of raw materials for manufacturing lithium batteries. On the other hand, there is no regular maintenance. You will also save over $3,000 every 15 years. According to an invoice from Tesla shared by Current Automotive, a complete 75 kilowatt hour battery replacement for a Model 3 costs $16,550.67. That's $2,000 $2,299.27 in labor and $14,251.40 in parts, with the actual battery costing $13.5 thousand dollars. However, battery prices may vary depending on your vehicle model. As Rich Rebuilds shared, remanufactured packs cost between nine to seventeen thousand US dollars depending on the complexity of the work, while new batteries can cost up to twenty two and a half thousand dollars. Overall, the economic benefits of salt water batteries are numerous. This greatly strengthens the position of brine batteries in the industry. But most most importantly, how safe are saltwater batteries? There are several advantages to saltwater batteries when it comes to safety. Firstly, it's non-toxic and non-hazardous. Unlike traditional batteries that contain toxic chemicals like lead and sulfuric acid, salt water batteries are non-toxic and non-hazardous. This means they pose no threat to the environment and are safe to handle and dispose of. Secondly, it's fire resistant, so no fire risk not flammable or explosive 
whatsoever. Other companies like ESS used salt and water and an iron electrolyte to create their own salt water battery. Mr. Eric Dresselhees is the CEO of ESS Incorporated. He tweeted that there's no toxicity, the technology we build doesn't start fires or doesn't blow up in a fire. And this company announced their test of this salt water battery on Twitter. Our long duration batteries do just fine in extreme weather, as this system running in the 100 and 15 degree heat of Nevada proves no need for HVAC cooling and no risk of fire. They also have a very low risk of leakage. While traditional batteries are prone to leaking, which can be dangerous if the chemicals come in contact with skin or eyes, salt water batteries have a much lower risk of leaking since they do not contain any corrosive chemicals. And if the container gets ruptured somehow, then it's safe to touch because it's just salt and water. Also, I can't stress this enough, but salt water batteries are environmentally friendly. One of the advantages of a salt water battery is that it is made up of salt water, which is environmentally benign materials, unlike toxic metals and other materials that most lead acid or lithium ion batteries use. Moreover, unlike other manufactured battery processes that use harsh chemicals such as cyanide or mercury, salt water battery production relies on salt and water, which are safe and easy to obtain. Moreover, the process can be done entirely by hand without the need for electricity or other energy sources, making it a very low impact and sustainable technique. And lastly, because salt water batteries are the safest materials, discarded battery parts may be recycled more easily. At the same time, these batteries are easy to dispose of once they have served their purposes. In contrast, with lithium-ion batteries, it takes a professional and specialized business to handle the dismantling of a lithium battery while it is recycled, due to its great potential for explosion. Other batteries cannot be recycled outside either since they are made with harmful elements like lead, acid, or heavy metals like manganese, cobalt, and nickel from lithium ion batteries. Next, how are salt water batteries more efficient than other batteries? With a life cycle of roughly 5,000 cycles at 100% depth of discharge, salt water batteries have a significantly higher life cycle compared to lithium ion batteries which have a conventional life cycle of 100% up to 1,000 cycles. Additionally, lead acid batteries will gradually lose capacity after only 500 cycles, which is 10 times less compared to salt water batteries. The key takeaway is the high energy density. Salt water batteries have an energy density of 100 watt hours per kilogram, while lead acid has a much lower energy density of 25 to 35 watt hours per kilogram, which is around four times less compared to salt water batteries. In general, the salt water battery is made of low-cost materials, yet the quality of the final product is extremely good. Manufacturers can produce low-cost, high-quality batteries with ease. This is significant evidence that salt water batteries will be feasible to replace in the battery industry in the future. Based on its high energy density, the salt water batteries can get charged and discharged just like any 48 volt battery bank as an example. You can use solar panels with a charge controller, an inverter or charger connected to the grid or a generator, a 48 volt wind or micro hydro turbine, and any way you charge as a 48 volt battery. Salt water batteries allow full discharge without harming the battery. Also, fully discharging the battery does not affect the life cycle of the storage system. Additionally, the stored energy inside the battery can go for days or even weeks without charge. For this reason, battery maintenance systems to control the charge are unnecessary. But at what temperature range can salt water batteries safely operate? The operating temperature is fairly wide, as much as 23 to 104 degrees Fahrenheit or around negative 5 to 40 degrees Celsius. Salt water batteries can still freeze at 14 degrees Fahrenheit or around negative 10 degrees Celsius, but you can thaw them and they will still work. A simple enclosure should be enough to prevent battery temperature from going below 23 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 5 degrees Celsius. A number of factors can influence the operating temperature including the following. Number one, overall ambient temperature. Number two, the enclosure of the battery and whether it is vented or sealed. Number three, whether the load itself creates heat. And four, your devices are nearby other heated equipment or other sources of heat. Exceeding standard operating temperatures will yield many harmful consequences. 
such as operating in excessively high temperatures for a power supply can reduce its lifetime. Occasional operation at temperatures modestly higher than the specified limits may not lead to any appreciable difference in lifetime, but the longer a power supply is operated this way, the shorter the lifetime will be in general. And in the case of extremely high temperature excursions for even brief periods, specific malfunctions or outright failures can occur quickly, often due to individual component malfunctions or breakdowns incurred by the high temperatures. Inversely, in low temperatures, a reduced lifetime of product failure from low operating temperature is rare, except in the most extreme cold conditions. In extreme cold, and especially when stored that way for a long time, the seals on the electrolytic capacitors in the power supply can fail. Such a failure will result in the non-operation or out-of-spec performance of the power supply. Now it's time for some trivia. Who was the first to commercialize salt water batteries? U.S. startup Salginex unveiled a salt water flow battery for large-scale storage, which is a redox flow battery with two separate tanks of electrolytes, one of which is salt water. Unlike other flow batteries, the new device is membrane-free promising big gains at the levelized cost of storage. The salt water tank can be used simultaneously for thermal storage, in combination with a heat pump using carbon dioxide as a refrigerant. Salginex's strategy is developing the technology and selling licenses to third-party manufacturers to commercialize the solutions. Additionally, in February, ESS used salt, water, and iron to manufacture their battery. They announced its collaboration with the Turlock Irrigation District, which is a California-based utility. ESS will also be installing salt water flow battery facilities in Sacramento, California as part of a collaboration with the Sacramento Municipal Utility District starting this year. Currently, salt water batteries can do a variety of useful tasks that other batteries cannot. In battery production, a liquid solution of salt water is used to capture, store, and eventually discharge energy. While a traditional lithium-ion battery uses the element lithium as its primary ingredient for conducting electricity, a salt water battery uses, you guessed it, sodium, the same element found in table salt. In other industries, it is used to produce fresh water. The Salginex redox process can also be adapted to produce graphene. Additionally, the salt water battery chemistry is optimal for cycling applications or EV batteries and stationary long-duration telecom systems. It is also used for applications in renewable energy, telecommunication towers, oil well pumps, agriculture irrigation pumps, and greenhouse irrigation, or lighting. The batteries are suitable for standalone storage or with solar or wind power. When can salt water batteries become a leader in the battery industry? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, please leave us a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and be sure to ring the bell so you'll stay up to date on new Tesla Car World content. Once again, we thank you so much for watching, and we hope to see you again next time. Until then, take care and be safe.